Welcome to Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is a very dear friend, Linda Broder, owner of Pen and Paper LLC, which is located in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, my hometown. Linda, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Linda, you and I go way back. I remember when you first opened the door yes. of Pen and Paper we're, LLC. We're in our 17th year now. We started 17? in April of 2000. Wow. And I opened without name recognition. And um, at that time, I was still teaching in the school district of Philadelphia and sometimes having to stay at night until 2 o'clock in the morning. But when you mm. own your own business, it's always with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I only stay until 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> Whoa, okay, progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, let's, let's go back. School District of Philadelphia, what were you doing there? And how did this idea about entrepreneurship kind of meld with that? Well, we, I had raised two children, mm -hmm. and timing, of course, in life is everything. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, well, first I was a school librarian for most of those years, which I think gave me skills that were very good segue into owning a store that is involved with invitations, the details, um, you know, grammar, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I had worked in the summer in this business for someone else and so therefore I didn't just wake up one day you know <laughs> I've always loved paper um, you know always no matter what city I was ever in would always seek out a stationery store and you know just go in and check out I like the tactility of paper and feeling different papers etc um, our store has expanded in the sense of we carry gift items as well that are non paper items so you certainly someone can come in they can purchase a box of stationery we do printing on site if you're meeting someone for lunch in 15 minutes and if I'm there I'm happy to accommodate you with a quick gift and you look like you're a champ ah. um, but we have other items as well yeah. so timing as I said is everything I probably would have loved to have done this much earlier on but in order to start a business and to maintain it when you're owner operated you really have to be there and obviously having raising two children you have to be home for them mm -hmm. so everything sort of fell into place the location uh, the timing our younger daughter was going to college and so so be it so we just jumped in and said come what may mm -hmm. and um, you know Obviously, I do not have an MBA. You know, I have advanced okay. degrees in education. I think a lot of it is common sense. I think you have to, no matter what economy it is, whether the internet, which was, of course, not as prevalent in the year 2000 when I started, um, it's service, service, and service. And I think today, in today's world, this is what's left standing are brick and mortar stores that, no matter what they're selling, provide excellent service. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it is instinct. You, I know how I'd like to be treated when I walk into a store, and therefore I try to be responsive to clients if they call and try to get back to them. You know, whether it's yes or no, the answer we can do it, we can't do it, it's available, it's not available. Mm -hmm. Um, the other component that I love, because I am a people person, is someone like yourself that I've known for a long time. And therefore, you know, somebody will come in, um, I've done their wedding, and then I've done birth announcements, and then we're doing birthday parties, or I've done birth announcements, and now we're doing their bar and bat mitzvahs, you know, mm, other life cycle right. events. And, you know, you know the family, um, and you know, people know me, and, and I, I'm gratified that a lot of people still prefer to um, support local stores, mm -hmm. local businesses, and, and that's very mm -hmm. gratifying. And they'll say that to you know me when they come in. Absolutely, you know. your passion is clear. You talked about the tech. Tility. Yes, is that, yes, is that a word? yes. I want to yes. be careful now that yeah. you said you're going to do grammar checking. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't get nervous. <laughs> um, you've got some samples here. Mm -hmm. Share share what you brought uh, to okay. show to the audience. Well, what I'm going to say is that technology has enhanced our ability to do uh, more intricate invitations. Mm. Gone are the days when you just open up a book with a client and you know it's either a white or ivory paper it's only raised print and therefore number one 
uh, there's a lot of things we can do for people, plus the fact also that, um, you know, I can get paper from a wholesaler if, the, mm -hmm. if this company doesn't have it. You're able to match this. You know, you sit and do a mock-up. You know, it's much, much more involved. For example, um, this is an invitation we, uh, we've done. And because of technology, 20 years ago you couldn't have done it, where this is digitally printed, um, you know, the girl's picture. You know, mm -hmm. not every young lady is going to want their picture on here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a material, well, this is one of the reasons I chose this, that this is a material that the actual invitation was in and purposely not glued down so that the guest who's receiving this can enjoy, you know, the photo of, of the oh, child. Right. But this is a type of plastic. It's bendable. It's not a plexiglass. That we've done also, which is a little bit harder. But the ability to be able to print on this is something that perhaps 20 years ago that technology was not available you know I stress very much and this is another reason I brought this um, trying to maneuver this year okay thank you is still that we try to encourage people to include a response card and envelope because this is a skill that um, young people today should not have the experience of of being taught to do this. Um, you know, an emailed response is great if you're having a party, a barbecue at your house. Mm -hmm. But I think still in a situation for a milestone event, whether it's a wedding or it's a bat, a bat mitzvah, a bar mitzvah, uh, sometimes maybe even um, some people for a christening that mm -hmm. they want to do a reply card. You know, mm -hmm. bridal showers, things like that, we've sort of relaxed the rules and we put an email and a phone still you know, on an invitation like that. So that's important, you know, mm. that th it shouldn't be that the art of filling out a response card, you know, has gone with the wind. Um, you know, sometimes people also want to include a details card. Uh, for example, people are much more mobile today. They have family that doesn't live here. They want to reserve hotel rooms in advance, and the hotels oh. will only hold it usually at a special rate till a month before the event. So. Uh, many times that's included on here. Sometimes they've sent a save the date already, but they want to reiterate it. Um, pick up time for the parents if it's an event, you know, where, because we don't put an ending time typically if it's an adult party. So oh. if the party starts at 7, mm. perhaps the parents need to know to come at 11 o'clock to pick them up. Or if the host and hostess, host and hostess are providing transportation and they're meeting back at the original venue, what time to pick them up. So these are all things that make it a little more involved than perhaps it might have been on an order that I wrote 17 years ago. So part of what I'm hearing you say, Linda, is you're more than a stationary store. Absolutely. It, a part of that service is some etiquette training. Part e of that etiquette. service is and there's, ther and there's therapy. Yes, there is a great deal of <laughs> oh, therapy. Oh, and therapy. There's wow, a lot of therapy. that's a bargain. Well, you know, I can be objective and someone will say, you know what, do you think I really should invite this cousin? And then they'll give me the backstory. <laughs> and my answer always is, throw it in their court. It's always good to reach out. You have to be prepared that they may come, so you have yes. to prepare for the fact that this, these might be two or four or six extra guests. But if you're inclined to, there's no harm in reaching out, you know, mm -hmm. and this way then you didn't do the wrong thing. Right. You know, you can never be accused of, of having... <laughs> so, you know, a lot of it is that um, a lot of people, for example, have never made this event like this before, mm -hmm. particularly a wedding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll ask me related things, not about the wedding dress so much, but just table arrangements, you know, because we do other things besides the invitations. Mm -hmm. Obviously, thank you notes, place cards. We do personalized napkins. You know, mm -hmm. I tell everybody I do, I'll do it all for you, except I don't ask me to cook. Okay. Or play the music. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the cooking. Definitely not the cooking. Um, this is a this is another example here. Mm. Now this is a custom envelope, so this is a little more involved. Wow. What instead of using a lightweight envelope, they're physically taking the paper that the invitation is printed on, and they have a die, and they're able to uh, make an envelope for it. Mm -hmm. Something like this, though, has to be hand calligraphied because uh, one of the services we do provide on a normal envelope is we can print the names and addresses on your envelope. Something like this 
you'd have to use white or gold, and that's something that on an inkjet, nobody, you know, nobody can mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So people who would purchase something in a dark color, particularly the envelope, are going to, you know, un go with the understanding that the, we're going to have to have a calligraphy done. And I do have a, a few calligraphers. And again, people bring me the list. We vet the list. We go over it with them because there's certain protocol that I'm not expecting them to have known, and this is why they're coming to us. Okay. Um, for example, a woman with a title always precedes a man. So if someone's a doctor, um, therefore it's like Dr. Jane Smith and Dr. John Smith. Mm -hmm. Or if the husband is not a doctor, it's still Dr. Jane Smith and Mr. John Smith. Oh. Yes. Okay. Or people who are not married, even if they're living in the same house, they should, their names should be stacked. They, the only time if they have two different last names they should be on the same line is if a woman's married and she kept her maiden name. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but again, um, mm -hmm. I'll say, say to them, bring me the list and we sit down at the table and, you know, I try to catch, you know, zip code mistakes that is, mm -hmm. as much as we can catch, you know, mm -hmm. humanly possible, you know. Wow. Yeah. Really and that's powerful. really the hardest part for the client is gathering the addresses. That's mm -hmm. the hardest thing for them to do. It's really hard to track mm -hmm. people down. Somebody moved. Et cetera, et cetera. So, given the fact that you're approaching 17 years, yes. um, what's like one story that kind of client story, success story that sticks in your mind where, you know, you're saying, I'm really glad I had a chance to work with that customer because obviously we made a difference. And I know there's yeah. lots of those. Yeah, well, what's one that I mean, uh, um, sometimes somebody will come in and they covet. Um, a certain invitation and it's mm -hmm. something that perhaps might be uh, out of their comfort level financially mm -hmm. and uh, I had somebody several years ago and I really I had done some work with her before and I really wanted to her for her to to be able to send out an invitation that she would be you know excited about and it meant sometimes me I had four different vendors working on it I had somebody oh who goodness. could put it together for her that was going to be less expensive than if somebody else did it I'm actually doing it right now also mm -hmm. you know um, the longer you're in business any business you know you develop your peeps as they say <laughs> you know people you can go to that you trust that mm -hmm. are going you know so again that's what makes a lot of these transactions a lot more, um, you know, complicated right, kind of thing. Right. And as I said a few minutes ago, I am very much a people person, which is what I love about our business. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my husband's retired now, right. and he helps me. <laughs> right. Of course, his he doesn't. Re he'll somebody he'll say to me, I've gone to the farmers market, and somebody said hello to me, hi Bob, and he's thinking to himself, No, wait, who is this? Where is? Whereas you know, I'm I'm very good with um, faces and names because right. of all the years I taught and I used to see like 600 children a week so oh, it's course. a skill you know you, do, you you know it's it's just a skill set you know mm. kind of thing 17 years now where do you see you in the business 5 years from now well i'm taking it year by year because okay. i'm not revealing my age okay um, fair enough you know i have worked my whole life Mm -hmm. I really love what I do. If I'm tired, I'm tired at night. I'm not tired of it. Mm -hmm. The good news is we live five minutes from the store, so mm -hmm. the commute is minimal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. we, my husband and I, have, we still have a few more years. We can stay there and then renegotiate. And I don't think I'd ever move anywhere else mm -hmm. because I think it's a location. People know where we are. Yes. And, they, and even if you move around the corner, they, they don't realize you moved and, right. and et cetera, et cetera. Right. We're right by the Bryn Mawr Post Office, so naturally someone can run in for a card who waited to the last minute, sit at our table, write it out. <laughs> I even have supplied stamps, and they run over to Bryn Mawr, you know, and mail it. Um, I'm taking it year by year. I, that's I'm not, a great I'm, answer. Uh, yeah, that's because a great I, I, answer. I'm not ready to play canasta. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, and there's enough. nothing wrong with that. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there. Fair enough. I, I haven't that. done my mm. wedding invitations yet, so you got to mm. stay in business yeah, at least okay. until I get married. <laughs> that's what people so. say to me. You got to wait until this. You know, you can't close yet. These milestones. Yeah, yeah. Linda, we've talked about Pen and Paper LLC. We've talked about Bryn Mawr. Where can people find you? Because some people may not know exactly right, okay. how to get in touch with you. Well, number one and pr primer. 
primary, it is a business of referral. Mm -hmm. And many times people will come to me who I'll say, how did you hear of us? They'll have lived in town or they live in Huntington Valley or they you know, live and have traveled to mm -hmm. come to see us. So a lot of it is your reputation and, the P and referral. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are featured several times a year in Mainline Life and mm -hmm. we were very proud that for all the years we've been in business, we have won various awards, whether it's best invitations, best stationery store, et cetera. So, uh, you know, that's another mode. You certainly, I guess in this day and age, shall I say Google. Right. You can Google right. pen and paper, and we do have an ampersand sign, not the word and, between <laughs> pen and paper. And so the exact address as we close yes. out the show. Yeah. 28 North Bryn Mawr Avenue, and for, we are the group of stores that curve around the parking lot of the Bryn Mawr train station. Right. We are, as I mentioned, two or three doors down from the post office, Bryn Mawr Trust, uh, Bravo, right. you know, Parvin's Pharmacy, who has been there probably since before the war. You know what I mean? <laughs> the buildings have been there since before the war. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Linda, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm very excited to have you here. And I did not say earlier, I love your necklace, oh. uh, so I wanted to include that. Oh, okay, just thanks. So you know, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. As I sure. said, I've known you a long time, and it's so nice for you to think, uh, to consider having me on. My pleasure. Thanks. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, significant TV. Join us as we continue to talk with entrepreneurs in the Philadelphia-based area. Thank you.